We usually go out to dinner on Christmas Eve night. Chinese? No. We go to Babo, Mario Batali's restaurant, because David, my husband, worked there uh, as one of his first jobs in New York uh, before he did, started doing his own thing and now has a, a cookbook in the works, which is awesome. Um, and they do on Christmas Eve a thing called Feast of the Seven Fishes, which is a traditional Italian feast for good luck um, for the harvest of northern Italy's uh, uh, fish. And so our kids are surprisingly adventurous eaters. And so we, we, we dine the Feast of the Seven Fishes on Christmas Eve and then wander around that area and get all the sugar out of them. <laughs> and then we go and, you know, hope Santa didn't give them coal again. Again? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wanted to put coal in the stocking just as a joke? Just to see what happened? Have I wanted to put coal in the stocking? Yeah. I've asked Santa to never put coal in the stocking. Um, oh, excuse me. Yes, I, I get I get. Sorry. How dare you, sir? <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, I thankfully know coal yet. Yeah, don't do it. My dad did it to me one year. Did he really? He thought it'd be funny. And did it traumatize you? I started crying. He was like, no, 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 I'm sorry. Here are all the gifts. I'm sorry. <laughs> My mother was like, what the hell are you doing, Randy? Like, <laughs> I think all of that stuff is, I just, I don't know. When kids are really, really small, it, it's hard to engage with them too much because you're just, you're just, an arbiter and you're trying to stop them from damaging themselves or other things and you're just constantly saying don't touch that whatever and then it turns a corner and uh and then they start to be actual people so this year now that they're they're seven and they're starting to read they're more self-sufficient than ever so when gideon says what he wants for christmas is to be able to give money to people that don't have any money uh, and that's not from me telling him a month before this is what he's supposed to say. It's one of those nice, you know, nice moments where you think, oh, they're actual people that have, that have souls and that, that have good morals sometimes and that they're nice. So that it's must, weird, yeah. It's, did you cry when he said that? Uh, no. That would be weird, wouldn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I, would bum, I, I, would be, I would be like, I did it. It's full success. Honestly, I wanted to let him know that what I thought was, that what he said affected me in a nice way without being overly emotional about it. So I said, oh, that is the nicest thing. I can't believe that you would say that. Instead, why don't you write that check to me <laughs> for all the stuff I pay for you? No, just kidding. So they make stuff and, uh, and yeah, we donate to charity and Santa still comes. It's a really good time of year. The elves and the shelves are everywhere. Do you know these elves in the shelf? You don't know this thing? So this is a thing. Each kid has an elf on the shelf. It's a little elf. It's about this big. And it sits on a shelf sometimes. And around December, it shows up. And then it disappears. And it goes and talks to Santa. And it is observing kids to make sure that they're being good or bad. These elves have started appearing in, in the beginning of December. And I don't know. You know all of a sudden, we'll come downstairs. And they'll be, they'll be in a whole different place. Just sitting there. Like little Cupid dolls. <laughs> Could be a good horror movie, to be honest, now that I think about it. But yeah, elves in the shelves are all over the place. Do you point out the elves if, like, no, if any of the kids are, you know? They find them before I do. Oh. I'm startled by them. <laughs> elves are weird, right? Yeah. Little elves that are stuffed animals that move around in the middle of the night. Now, that's kind of weird. 